Chris Charlton for kaijupop.com and welcome to my dark room. Actually, it's a firelit room. It's a very light room. I keep my rooms light. Uh, but this game is called A Dark Room um, and it's on iOS right now. Or actually, I mean, it's it's a web game. It started as a web game. You can play it at uh, adarkroom.com, I think. I'm not sure. I should probably do my fact checking before I get into this. Um, but it doesn't really sit very well with uh, iOS devices or mobile devices of, of any kind. So there is a native iOS app, which is uh, 200 yen or two bucks. Um, and what this is right here is kind of a survival slash come 4x. Um, become roguelike kind of thing it's hard to describe um it's kind of starts out this i'm doing quite well here i have a large village uh which is full of slaves uh which is a nice plot point that i'll get into um and it, the, the game starts out though with just a black screen and, and white text on a black screen i'm tempted to reset my game just to show you that that part um and show you what the game starts out like, but I don't want to lose my saves because I've worked so hard to get to this point. Um, and you know, the, the game when the game starts out, uh, you can do nothing but be in this dark room and light the fire. And basically, this is about your survival and the survival of a kind of community that you start building up. And it's all built around stoking this fire and clicking on things as time is recharged. So um, I wait till the line turns blue and then I can stoke the fire. Every time you stoke the fire, uh, you save. Um, but I've also, you know, th options grow and grow and grow. So as soon as you, you light the fire for the first time, a survivor comes to join you. And then you meet a builder and the builder's like, oh, I can make traps for you to catch creatures and then you start building huts and then more and more people come into your town uh, until you're basically at the point where I am now where I have hunters, I have trappers to sort of put bait in traps um, I have tanners who make leather for me uh, charcutiers who smoke my meat for expeditions and uh, I have miners and steel workers as well so I am an industrialized uh, little village here um, but that's grown from just being a couple people sort of surviving against uh, bandits and sort of marauding monsters. Um, but yeah, I've I've managed to build up, and I've seen my builder to build these carts and traps, and um, I've built all of these things now. But you can keep on building. Uh, huts, but it does tell you that you know you need certain resources. I need 362 wood to build my next hut and get more people to work for me. Um, but these other things, the smokehouse, the workshop, the steelworks, and the trade post, uh, I've built. Uh, so periodically these things will happen. Some random event will happen. Some things in the storeroom I investigate. Uh, and I've lost some wood, but I've gotten some scale. So hey, uh, you know that's all based on dice rolls and, and things. This doesn't look very exciting, does it? And I'm not doing a great job of selling it. Um, a lot of it is kind of built around, okay, for a long period of time, you'll be looking at this timer where I can go and retrieve wood so I can build the next hut and then I can check my traps. And then from there, it's about managing resources, uh, sending certain people in to hunt, uh, sending certain people into the mines and stuff like that. Um, but what it's about really, 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 as my fire's going dead, so I need to stoke that. Um, what it's about, really, really, is managing to steadily, steadily build things to better equip yourself to venture further into the world. So you gradually build these things that are in your workshop, um, starting with spears and then torches, water skins, all the way up to now where I have a full convoy with steel armor and steel swords. And um, from there, I can go out into a dusty path. So uh, I've kind of prepared myself here. I've got some bullets. I've got some bowlers, which stun enemies. Hopefully, we'll get to see some combat. Combat, even. Um, torture. I don't have any torches. Dear, dear. I'm going to have to make some torches. 
uh, before we go. So I'm gonna buy 10 torches, there we go. Um, and let's take three of these. Um, you get all set, all ready to go. Your guys get perks uh, progressively. I only have one here for whatever reason. I'm not sure how you, you get perks or whatever. Um, but anyway, and then you get going. And now it's kind of like Rogue, um, where you can travel north, east, south, and west. Uh, if you're playing on uh, the online version, uh, then you have uh, curse keys doing this stuff. But if not, yes, you are using these four symbols and you are the little at symbol and you're just going around and exploring and seeing what's what. Um, so I've traveled to my outpost here and it's gradually about slowly, slowly exploring and slowly, slowly exploiting. Um, so I started at home and then I explored out and reached um, the sea there and the eye, the iron and the coal mines, uh, which let me, which made me into like an industrialized uh, little place. You venture into these deep caves um, where you use your torch. And I think we're probably, I don't know, nothing really happened there. Um, so a lot of these are kind of, oh, there we go. So we got into combat here. That didn't take very long because I'm massively overpowered. Um, but the combat is just that simple. It's all delivered through text. And oh, here we go, here's another fight. I've got a sword which does a massive six damage. So you wait for that timer to fill up, and then you hit slash, and then it dies, and then you take the loot. And man, the more I'm playing this on video here, uh, the more rubbish it looks, I'm aware that it looks rubbish. And I'm aware that it's kind of difficult to describe how brilliant this is um, but I've just been obsessed with this game over the last few days and part of it is kind of this being in a, a completely unknown kind of area I guess it's the appeal of what Rogue is um, or was it that you know 30 years ago and it's about exploring this strange land that's that's mapped out only in ascii art and then getting these text descriptions you get uh it's really well written these very sparse uh pieces of text um that really give you a feel of this bizarre sort of post kind of post-apocalyptic land or is this prehistoric it's it's not entirely clear uh what we're in but you you start building up this big mental picture and I'm thinking should I venture out the the more I venture out um, the more I'll be able to see but I might get into trouble and and get in a fight with something far stronger than I am or I'm gonna stun him here using my bolo so that gives me some free turns um, and it's it's all about that that risk of, of venturing outside your comfort comfort zone I could have stayed in that village uh, where we were at the start and just kept mining stuff really I mean I, that, that could easily have, have been done that's that's one way of playing the game but what you want to do is kind of venture out find these deserted towns and explore and it it obviously there's there's nothing looks wise to this and it doesn't sound like much to say it but it's almost better for not having graphics because in a weird way, it, it it feels better to have this sparse presentation. It it feels all the more alien. It feels all the more weird. And it takes um, a lot of these games that are around that uh, you know we like here at kaijupop.com. Things like Don't Starve and survival based games like that, and boils them down. And I'm over encumbered here. Drop the pies. Um, it, it boils everything down to its constituent elements and, and deconstructs it. And um, it's strange how kind of powerful this is um, and just how absorbed you kind of are into it. And hopefully um, when we get back to the village, hopefully I will get back to the village because the thing is, 
you send out these expedi expeditions and you, you tool your guys up um, to go on these trips. But if you die and you can, you know, you can starve to death um, on the journey if you haven't packed enough food um, or you can get killed by monsters. And what I'm doing is I'm reaching out to these different outpoints, uh, outposts rather, is I'm building roads in between them, which obviously in RPG tradition uh, means it's it's harder for, you know, it's less likely that you'll be sabotaged on these little things. Um, but if you die, you lose everything that you've had. And um, for me now, at this point in the game, it, it isn't such a big deal. Um, this happens fairly often. You can gamble some wood to get more wood. Um, but I didn't get any wood there. That's rubbish. Um, I think you're not allowed to let the fire. I think the fire goes down. You're going to die. I don't know. Um, yeah, so I mean, it's it's kind of... I like the little presentation thing of, of the, the screen going dark um, when you... Uh, you know, when the fire's going out and you have to keep it lit... Um, you know, I kind of, that's a nice little presentational uh, twist. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's it's all about this risk and reward. And, and it feels now that there isn't that much risk. Now that I've got all of this stuff, um, that there isn't that much risk to venturing out. And I'm gradually now pushing the, the barriers of the, of the map, which is fairly small. Um, you know, and seeing what's what's within the game, but that's kind of in a way the story that it's it's telling. Uh, when you start out, you're a fight for it's a fight for survival, and um, you know every time you do lose an expedition, it's a big loss because you've lost a lot of your supplies. And now it's kind of to the point where I have everything that I need, and it feels now that there's kind of this area air of the game being about industrialization in a sense um because now that you've got you are kind of all powerful in a way uh it feels like you're just raping this land of of all its resources and and storming through and actually i did hope we'd get a little te um story interlude periodically um the woman that you find at the start of the game will say something and will just chip in with some commentary on what you're doing and it comes in at a text overlay at the top of the screen where it says stoke fire and a lot of that stuff is really good and she'll start kind of saying when you're just on the verge uh because at the start of the game you can't venture out of your community you can only stay in the village um when you first venture out she's like this isn't a good idea we should stay within and then she's resisting you becoming industrial and there's this great little subtle bit of storytelling and it's kind of already spoiled by going into the screen but like it, it really hit me when it happened when you start out on the screen it says on the top right because you your population and i have 56 of 56 slaves at the moment and when you start out the game they're just, I can't remember what they call them, but they just call them survivors. And at some point, as you're just allotting uh, resources and as random encounters happen and a couple of people die, but it's like, you don't care. You just keep on going on. And there's a text into the, 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 where she just goes, these people are just slaves now. And instead of survivors by that counter, it changes to slaves. And that's just... That's everything that is this game. It's it's so completely understated and really really subtle with with what it's doing, and yet it's it's strangely, incredibly powerful and immensely addictive. Um, I honestly I can't stop playing this. This is little more than cow clicker mechanically with some roguelike stuff on top, but it's it's just it's it's really good, and you do owe it to yourself uh to try it out so you can play it online um you know there's a browser-based version if you're if you just want to play it on your pc for absolutely free um or a couple of bucks if you want to get it on ios um a dark room strongly recommend it chris charton for kaijupop.com thanks for watching bye